Hello everyone, this is the Harmonic Hacksaw. This will be my second chorale composition video, and we will be in F major. Stick around for a recording at the end, created by me, on the recorder. As always, please like and subscribe, and if you have comments for stuff you like and stuff I can improve, please drop that down below. Thank you. Let's get started. So, as usual, we're going to do the first beat in all four voices before we start. Still having trouble remembering to change the voices, so hopefully by the time I get to video 500 maybe I'll have that figured out. Okay, so we got a melody in the soprano voice. Just four bars. Now let's fill out the bass to start outlining some chords. Okay, and then we're gonna start filling in the alto and tenor simultaneously. So since in the second and third beats, the soprano voice is doing the exact same thing, uh, we're going to try and change up the harmony a little bit to uh, draw some attention to the lower voices. Right there, I wanted to do a fifth to an octave, but I didn't want to break voice leading rules because later on in this chorale I am going to. I changed the speed because I'm playing this back on double speed and I thought maybe it sound better this way but I'll change it in a second. So one thing um, I definitely like to do is spreading motion throughout all the voices, and I think that's a pretty standard thing to do in uh, four-part voice leading. Um, it uh, shows the independence of each part. Okay, so we're actually ending on a half cadence there, because uh, C is the 5 of C. And uh, another way you could tell is because of that B natural in the soprano voice. Um, that lets us know that we are journeying into a different key. So that's the one thing to remember. If you see accidentals, something is suspicious. We're gonna pretend I didn't just put all that in the second voice, but hopefully I'm gonna change it. There we go. So we can see in this phrase, we're bringing it back to, bringing it back to F. So we kind of climbed the mountain up to, up to the five, and now we're going back down to the one. Now I'm pretty sure what I just did in the tenor voice is a voice leading error. Um, I believe it would be contrary fifths or direct fifths where you go from an octave in two voices to a fifth or, or vice versa. I was a little indecisive about that note because I didn't like 
how those two beats had almost the exact same notes, but um, I decided that having the the five seven and the last beat would be enough motion to be pleasing to the ears. Let's start the next phrase. Okay, we got a melody out. Let's crank out a bass line. One handy thing to do to make stuff sound nice and satisfying is to uh, do contrary motion or move in steps in one voice and leaps in the other voice. Uh, the options are limitless, do different rhythms. We're just going to try and spice up this chorale as much as we possibly can. Okay, so the last chord of 9, we could call it a 4-7, or we could treat that A on top as some kind of non-chord tone. At the end of the video, I'm actually going to put my Roman numeral analysis of this, so... Anyone who's interested in that would like that a lot. There's my favorite suspension. I guess you could call it a 9-8 because the C and B flat in the tenor are a ninth and eighth above the note in the bass, respectively. I like this 4 to 3 suspension in the soprano because, because it uh, actually makes a crunchy minor second dissonance between the tenor and soprano, which may not be strictly common practice legal, but it, it gives it a little kick. I'm proud of this measure because if you notice on every eighth note subdivision, there is motion in one of the voices and I, I like to do this a lot because it makes everything, it makes everything in the chorale seem like a big machine instead of just like a soloist over a, over a bunch of chords. It makes it kind of spin a little bit. So that's another half cadence, although it's hard to tell because there's like 8 million notes. But now we're taking it back from tonic. Let's do a little victory lap at this last phrase here. Okay, let's fill in these voices and see what kind of interesting chords we can make. The measure I'm doing right now, I analyzed as all a one chord. You'll, you'll notice that there are different notes in here, but the third beat in the tenor and bass, I classified the, the first half of that beat as a passing tone, because a D, a B flat, an F, and a C wouldn't really translate to any kind of common practice defined chord. Honestly, I just did that because I like how it sounds. So there's three kinds of a 6-4 six, six chord. There's the cadential 6-4, which we actually have in here at some point, which is where you use the cadential 1-6-4. 
then you go to 5, and then you go to 1, and the 1, 6, 4 has a dominant function. Then there's a passing 6, 4, where it's passing. Man, I really don't know this stuff anymore. And the third kind is something. Um, I'm going to look this up and tell you the next time I do this. Let me write down that note. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, stick around for a recording of this chorale.